Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the new Marvel Legends Armadillo Build-A-Figure Wave, Morloon. Morloon is a dimension-hopping vampire that is more or less compelled to hunt down spider power-having individuals, what they call, like, spider totemic individuals from across the multiverse. So naturally, this has put him in conflict with Spider-Man a number of times, and then, you know, if you count, like, all the different universes he's been to, quite a few Spider-Men. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at Morlun's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll see the figure itself, we'll get a quick look at the Build-A-Figure piece, and then we'll check out all of Morlun's posability, we'll check out his swappable head. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Morlun comes in your standard Marvel Legends packaging. You get your armadillo call-out right up here. You get just the generic Spider-Man logo, and then his name right there. Uh, his background's interesting. It's very, I don't know, very dark and chaotic looking. And then we can see Morlun here. He doesn't seem to come with any optional hands, which is kind of a shame. Uh, but he's, you know, very unique looking character. Very, uh, you know, Dracula-esque in appearance. Got like the big cuffs fancy suit, all that, with like the long coattails. He's got his alternate, like more angry looking head, and then we see the right arm of Armadillo down there. The Armadillo arm. So over here we get some artwork of Morloon, looking like he's just kind of stalking the shadows up against a wall. This appears to be the same artwork. I hate when they do that. So looks like he's not so much, I mean he's kind of stalking, but he's also kind of just chilling there. Let his hair blow in the wind. Over here we get his name and his flavor text, and that reads, From the darkness, the vampire Morloon hunts Spider-Man in an effort to slay the superhero and feed on his powers. Kind of an unusually dark description for a retail action figure, but I'll buy it. I like it. Down here we get a render of Armadillo, and then our wave cross cells. So you get your integrated suit Spider-Man, black and gold suit Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, J. Jonah Jameson, Miles Morales Spider-Man, Morlun himself, and then lastly, Shriek. So we're most of the way through this wave now. We just get Morlun and Shriek to go through. And then, just like with the Retro wave, we'll take a look at the Build-A-Figure last. Okay, now we can see Morlun out of the package. We'll get a quick look at his Build-A-Figure piece. So this is the right arm of the armadillo. So it's got the same articulation as the other one. You got your universal shoulder peg here, your bicep swivel, Elbow band and your universal wrist. Again, he's got some pretty jagged looking claws, and luckily they're not just like a mirror of the other ones, they have their own unique individual detailing and tooling to them, so I like that. You know, it makes him far more realistic looking. And then as far as Morlun himself, we get our toy here, and his head is on a ball joint, though the articulation is very limited by his hair, and even has a little hinge that can make him look down a little bit, but not really up, because his hair. He has uh, universal shoulders, which is nice. Got a bicep swivel. He's got his double bend elbows, which work quite well. And he has his universal wrists. Now here's a detail I hadn't noticed. He's got the little sucker things on his hands. So um, that's something that's very reminiscent of the comic book portrayal of Morbius, who's probably the more famous uh, vampire nemesis of Spider-Man. Uh, kind of makes you wonder why they did go with this guy instead of Morbius, knowing that that character had a movie coming up. you think they want to cash in on that. But maybe they also knew that movie was going to be horrible and didn't want to associate themselves with it, which would be fair, because I haven't heard anything good about that movie at all. So yeah, uh, so we see how he feeds. He's got like the little sucker things. So he appears to be a living vampire like Morbius. He has a waist swivel that goes all the way around. And then he actually does have an ab crunch. You can see it there, though he can't use it very well because of his vest and jacket and all that. Plus, look at the silver vest. Look how nice that is. That is real fancy looking. He's got the little jewel there around his neck. He's got his universal hips, which get a pretty good range of motion there. He's got a thigh swivel. He's got the double bend knees, which work very well. He's got ankle rock. And he's got like that ankle rotation or pivot. But what's interesting is also just the entire foot area, like the whole shoe, also just rotates a full 360. So he's got a lot of rotation for his ankles. Very interesting. Um, he's not the most stable when it comes to standing him up. He kind of shares that trait with uh, JJ from the Sway. 
But if you're creative, I'm sure you can get them in plenty of really nice, really cool stances. And lastly, he doesn't come with a lot of accessories, so he's just got the alternate head. Let's go ahead and pull this smiling head off, which can be kind of hard to get a hold of. There you go. Pop it off. There's his neck stump. You can see it does indeed have a hinge. And we'll pop the angry face on. One where maybe he's getting his butt kicked by Spider-Man or something. He's not happy. I actually read something very interesting. I read that uh, Morloon is actually afraid of Earth 616, which is like, you know, your main Marvel Comics continuity Earth. He's scared of it because he keeps getting killed by Spider-Man in that continuity over and over again. So he'll like actively avoid going there as he's hopping across universes trying to kill spider totem dudes. I found that quite humorous. Uh, so yeah, there he goes. More sinister snarling face falling over. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, like I said, not the best when it comes to getting him to stand. He's just got, you know, he's very tall, very slim. And having his long legs with fairly limited ankle rocking makes him a little bit hard to get just right. It's doable, but he's a bit more finicky than a lot of other figures. And here's a little group shot I threw together of one of my few comic book heroic characters that I have so far. Most of mine are still MCU based. So we get the heroic character Dreamwalker being unknowingly stalked and about to be fed on by Morleon here. And you can just see kind of the, the sinister glee at which he's about to partake of his next little snack there. And I really, I, I think the little hand sucker things are really, really nice touch. It also makes me realize that I don't know nearly as much about this character as I should. Because I didn't even realize that he was the same type of vampire that Morbius was. With the whole hand suckers and all that. So, you know, he must be a living vampire, not like your typical undead Dracula type. So it does make him pretty interesting. I do wonder if there were cross paths. I haven't read all the comics, I don't know, but like, they have to have, right? Like, there's no way they designed a vampire so similar to Morbius and they haven't encountered each other at some point. Which makes me really wish we had a Morbius figure. I don't think there's one. Given the uh, general reception of the recent Morbius movie, there may not be one for a while, too, because I think that put a bad taste in everyone's mouth for the character. Which is a shame, because he's really cool. I really liked Morbius in the 90s animated series. I thought they did him, like, absolute justice. Made him a very, very tragic character. Which is something I feel the movie really failed to deliver on. Like, I, I couldn't bring myself to just care at all. <laughs> uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I think for the most part, Sony really should just let Marvel Studios handle the Marvel comic movies. Like... Most of the stuff that they touch that's just on them, and I'm not just talking Marvel, but just like most of Sony's movies, lately, they've been pretty mediocre at best. And aside from maybe the Venom movies, they seem to have lost their touch on solo superhero movies. Like the Spider-Man films were good, but they were also made in collaboration with Marvel Studios. I mean, they had to borrow a lot of the characters from the MCU to make those movies happen. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure what the future holds for that character, but I would love to get a comic-inspired or maybe cartoon-inspired in the retro line take on Morbius so I can go ahead and put him along Morloon here. And this completes our look at the new Marvel Legends Morloon. I find this figure to be very stylish looking. I think it came out very, very well. I love the head sculpt. I love the very uh, detailed take and sculpting on his outfit. The jacket, all that, the shoes. Looks really nice. He is one of the less stable figures in this wave. He's not as bad as uh, JJ over there. Like, he can stand up a little better, but not by much. And again, I think it all comes down to dress shoes. Like, these these loafers, they gotta go. Because they really inhibit the ankle articulation and make it very, very hard to pose these guys right. And also, a lot like uh, J. Jonah Jameson, he's just kind of very tall and thin. So his center of gravity is not great for balancing him out. So you gotta pretty much keep him in more or less these static, very upright poses to, you know, some variation. Uh, but other than that, I think he's really good. I like the hands. It is kind of a shame he didn't come with additional hands. That's probably the one thing I don't really like about him is that there's not a lot to him. There's the one alternate head and that's it. So, you know, it would have been nice if he had maybe had just an extra set, maybe closed fists or something. Uh, but what he comes with are really nice because they really show off the little suckers there on the palms. 
Uh, I think both head sculpts are good. I like this more uh, just kind of calm and charming one. You know, very much gives him that Bella Lugosi vibe. And, you know, shows that he's very much full of himself. So I dig it. It may not be the most exciting, the most poseable figure out there, but it looks really good in the display piece. Like, just a static shot like this looks really, really nice. So I do recommend him. He's a little more obscure. He's so obscure that I mispronounced his name, like, four or five times <laughs> during the other reviews. And I was like, oh, the cross I kept calling him Mordoon. I don't know why. I just, I didn't get close enough to, like, lean in and, and read his name properly the first time, and then I just kind of ran with it <laughs> until I finally realized, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm totally saying his name wrong. Um, so, yeah, more Loon, not more Dune, more Loon. Uh, not actually related to Morbius, more Loon, Morbius, it's kind of weird. Uh, he does seem kind of like a bit of a knockoff of Morbius, like they were just kind of running out of ideas and just made another Morbius character. I don't know, but I do like him. I Again, I think he's very sleek looking, and plus, he does come with a build a figure piece that gives him some added value. So overall, I think he's a worthwhile buy. And if you do pick him up, I think you'll get a very interesting, uh, you know, recurring sinister villain in your collection. Of course, that's just my take on Morloon. Now I want to know what you all think of him. Do you see a spot for him in your collection? Is he a character that you're interested in? Or are you like me where, like, you really didn't have much of an idea of who he was beforehand and had to look it up? Because I did. I, I really had to do some research because I, I had never heard of Morloon before. Uh, so, you know, with that in mind, do you still want him even if you don't know who he is? Any and all feedback is always welcome in that comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss out a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Marvel Legends Armadillo Wave Morlude. And with all that said, I will see you next time.